I'm now joined by Sadir Chattervedi, president and board member of LTI Mindtree, along with Andrew Curry, manager of the Center Data Office at ExxonMobil. Gentlemen, great to have you on the program today. Great to be here. Great to be here, Ryan. Sadir, LTI Mindtree recently released the State of the Generative AI Adoption Report. Can you share the key takeaways? And from your position as president, what's your primary focus over the coming months? Yeah. Well, thank you, Ryan. So, always a pleasure to be back at Snowflake uh, Summit 2024 this year. Um, I think the, the three main findings that we got from the Generative AI report that we commissioned, we had just over 400 senior you know, data or chief data officers respond to that survey, uh, so very good sample size. Firstly, we found that 80% of our clients are doing something significant in generative AI. So this is not just in the hype curve and not just POCs, but looking to actually do significant deployments of, of uh, you know, enterprise AI and, and generative AI. That was the main finding. The two areas that they're most focused on is customer experience and uh, productivity. What can we do to improve you know, individual productivity within the organization? That obviously has some efficiency benefits, but I think it's looking to do more with less or more with what we have today, with a clear sentiment. And the third thing was that the concerns around AI are also very significant. So three out of four of our clients will, you know, still feel that there is work to be done from an ethical uh, data trust perspective or data quality perspective, and frankly, even a cost perspective now, you know, because we charge these uh, large language models charge you based on tokens, and you know, you need to be careful about how you essentially, you know, budget for these and spend money. So those are the three main findings that came out, and for us, from a you know, where we are focused on. I think the first thing is, you know, I'm, Snowflake has been one of our biggest partnerships in the data space, and it is now one of our biggest partnerships in the AI space. So very, you know, happy to see the AI data cloud coming through. We were one of the first companies to launch a Polar Sled with Arctic, you know, which is Polar Sled is now a Gen AI. So it's a migration tool, should help to, you know, migrate workloads much faster. The other area that we're looking at with, uh, again, uh, in partnership with Snowflake is, to see how you know, we drive more consumption, industry level consumption. So we're using our industry expertise to drive consumption, because that's ultimately the industry use cases, the sound of work that we're doing with Andrew and, and team. And this is, I think that's, that's a clear focus of ours to bring uh, you know, higher consumption. And the last thing that I would add is that we have, uh, you know, if you look at the partnership ecosystem that we have uh, along with, uh, so I'll pick up NVIDIA as an example. So we did a tripartite meeting with NVIDIA, LTI Mindtree, and Snowflake together, looking to see how we can you know, provide joint solutions to our clients. So multifaceted approach uh, you know, in terms of how we address some of the requirements that our clients are talking about. But Snowflake is right at the center of it. Thank you, Sudhir, very much the power of the broader AI data cloud ecosystem. Great to be joined with your customer at Exxon Mobil. Andrew, at Exxon, you believe the need for energy is universal. What's the data showing you? Yeah, I think the data showing us is a lot of possibilities and there's a lot of potential. We're, we're taking a very careful, I'll say, centralization strategy. We're trying to bring more data together in a single place and really to leverage the full corporate scale of ExxonMobil. We're a Fortune 5 company, we're large, and we want to make sure we're not doing small bets. We want to make, say, what are those big opportunities? And to have those big opportunities, you have to start bringing more and more of that data together, br break down those data silos. So our AI strategy is highly centered around our data strategy as well. You can't have an AI strategy without that data strategy as well. So really working with Snowflake as one of those central pieces of our data ecosystem to bring that data together. Uh, maybe data that used to be you know, broken down by business divisions, now all comes together, all sits in one place. And now you can start saying, how do I run a global supply chain for ExxonMobil in a way that we've never done before? It would be just one example. It's kind of the business opportunities we're untapping by having that centralization strategy and bringing that data together. Great to hear very much that holistic approach. Sidir, so I want to pivot back to LTI Mindtree with a purpose to unleash possibilities. How is the team innovating to put your clients one step ahead of the competition? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the great thing about the conversations we're having right now is I do believe, you know, AI is, after the internet, the most transformative technology that we have seen uh, in, uh, you know, in terms of large scale deployment. And uh, I think clients now, both businesses and IT, are looking at three areas in our experience. So first is they're looking at how we can generate more revenue with you know, existing assets. Uh, so you know, a lot of our clients are looking at monetizing their data assets. Uh, you know, in fact, I met a few here who want to launch their own data products as well. Uh, it's, I think that's an excellent uh, you know, thought, uh, idea, and you know, we're here to support. So revenue generation uh, with what's already there. 
The second is, you know, we've talked about productivity it is an important part. One of the things that we've seen with productivity is just the simple fact of information summarization, right? Some of the use cases that we are seeing there uh, leads to a jump in productivity. You know, we, you know, 700 clients, we do legal contracts and SOWs all the time, we have a large legal team, and they're using Genii very effectively to summarize this, in fact, even summarizing the, the edits on a, on a document, and, you know, things like that, they're just great productivity improvement areas. And we're working with Snowflake Document AI on that, so, you know, as you know, we're an internal Snowflake shop as well. Uh, the third area is experience. I think a lot of work being done around customer experience. Some of the examples of the contact center work that I've seen. You know, our vision is that the next time anybody calls a contact center, they directly talk to a human without going through IVR, because that's the level of you know efficiency or the speed at which you know Gen AI can help an agent solve issues. But you know, we we, we think you know we strongly believe that. You know, that human connection is very important in the customer experience world, and if you can enable that to happen, that'll be great. And last but not least, our own product suite, Phosphor, which is uh, on Snowflake now. Uh, we're launching, you know, we've done, the, we've actually, it's called a data to decision suite, and it's really helping. We've launched about 30 AI use cases along with Snowflake on that. So we're looking to see how we deploy them so that it speeds up our client's journey towards monetize, you know, either revenue increase, or productivity improvement or experience improvement. But these are the areas that we're laser focused on. And I think we have a good mantra inside. You know, we believe that AI will disrupt everything that we do. And we'd rather be leaders in terms of creating that disruption for ourselves as well. Uh, it doesn't matter if it cannibalizes some of our revenue. It's, like, it's a welcome thing. But we are very clean, you know, clear that it's AI for everyone and AI by everyone. And that's how we're going to take it forward. I love that mantra, Sidir. Shifting back to Exxon, dates over 140 years. How is your data foundation really preparing the business for the next century, Andrew? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I, you know, when we build this data foundation, you know, our view of the future is first you build data products and think of those as reusable components of data that can serve both yeah. applications and analytics. And so we think that operational plane and analytical plane can be served by the same source data, the same data that we curate once. So you get this drive of reuse of data consistent across your analytics and you know, your, uh, your applications and suddenly you get this data gravity, this momentum where people say, I have to use this data. It's the same data you do in financial clothes with, the same data that trading's using for their analytics. Analytics. I want to use that data too, I trust that data, I need to be consistent across this corporation. Uh, it, it means we're going to be faster, it's going to be, again, we're going to get that corporate scale we've been really looking for and making sure we're fully leveraged. Uh, but it also means you know, the importance of data becomes very critical, so understanding what is the data quality of, of this data. Right. Is, is it, you know, is it trustworthy to make these decisions? Do you want to do predictive analytics and predict something in the future based on this data? Well, you really need to understand that. Where did that data come from? What was the quality of that data? Those types of things uh, really means we actually need even more partnership with our internal business. You know, who are the subject matter experts? Can we trust this data? What are the business rules associated with this? So there's a real drive on getting your data ready. AI is coming, Gen AI is coming. Make sure that data is ready to go to take full advantage of it. Need that top-down approach. Absolutely. Mm. Such a pleasure having you back on the program. Before we wrap, any advice you'd like to share with the audience as they embark on their own data transformation journey? Sidir, if you'd like to start. I think, you know, uh, you know, data as a strategic asset is now well understood by everybody. And I think I'll just underscore some of the points that Andrew was just making that I think, you know, creating the, the strongest possible data foundation is still the most critical step to take. Yeah. You know, all Gen AI requires is that strong data foundation. So you need a strong data foundation, strong Gen AI foundation. And I, I think that, you know, time and energy spent on that is very, very well spent. The other thing I would say is that AI is scaling. I think it's extremely important. Now uh, we've just we've trained just over 40,000 people already on AI. We made these training materials available to all our clients as well. Very, very happy to train as many people as possible out there because I think the more skills that we build, the more use we will find, you know, and we'll build on those foundations that we've built. Great to hear, Sidir and Andrew. From your perspective. No, I, I would actually fully agree with that. I think you know, data literacy and AI literacy is becoming critically important. And I think uh, you know, the business is starting to pick up that, that language. And you know, sometimes the danger is they're using the language improperly. Mm -hmm. And you can get confusion and, and different yeah. things. So you know, starting to upskill your organization where they can understand what we're talking about with data. Yeah. And also upskilling our data organizations so they understand the business. And yeah. that kind of bringing that together to make things yeah. work is critically important. So I think there's a real onus on us as a central data office to make sure that that data literacy, that AI literacy, is growing throughout the corporation. So a real critical key for our success. Great to hear, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Great to have Exxon and LTI Mindjury on Data Cloud Now. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you very much.
And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green, and this is Data Cloud Now. Thank you.